Do you need help protecting your finances as you enter retirement? David Dickens of KC Financial Advisors has got you covered. Welcome to the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Hey, welcome to another edition of Cover Your Assets KC. Walter Storholt alongside David Dickens, President Wealth Advisor of KC Financial Advisors, serving you in the Kansas City area and beyond. Great show on the way today. We're talking about Roth IRAs, diving into the topic today. We're going to really focus on can you be too young for a Roth IRA? and lots of other uh, similar questions evolving and surrounding that particular topic. David, can't wait to uh, get into that today. I know we're going to play our Roth cheering, I'm sure, at some <laughs> point in today's episode. It's going to be a good one whenever that happens. I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. We are um, headed up to Minneapolis later this week for the big wedding of daughter number two. So um going to be a short work week and a, hopefully a fun, nice, long weekend. Yeah, it is really exciting. Do you call your daughters daughter number one, daughter number two? I'm just like... At, at, only on podcasts. Only on podcasts. Okay. All right. Yeah. I actually call them by their names when they're in the room. <laughs> I could see if you had twins. It'd be like, twin one, twin two. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem yeah. like a dad thing to do, right? Like, I could I could see that. Daughter number one, get over here. Or like, whenever you're mad at them, instead of using the middle name, you'd be, you just call them by their number. Daughter number one. <laughs> well, you know, when you when you talk to people, like, for instance, our audience... Very few of our audience actually knows me. And so to mention somebody's name, they're going, oh, who, which, who is that? Is that, a, is that his wife? Is that a daughter? And That's so it's just easier point. to say. Yes. Yeah, yes. daughter number two. And they're like, oh, well, how many do you have? Well, I have three. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> shorthand. It, in, it invites the question then when they get to meet you of, so what are your daughter's names? And then you can, okay, daughter number one is so-and-so. And <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's good stuff. Well, let's get into the topic, and then uh, you've got lots of big things to take care of this week with uh, marrying off daughter number two. So uh, we'll take care of our Roth IRA business first. And as I said, too young for a Roth IRA. That's the title of our episode today. So, David, I'm pretty sure I know what your answer is here, but let's at least ask the obvious one. Is it ever too early to start a Roth IRA? Walter, it is never too early to start a Roth IRA. So this this topic uh, came to me. I've had a number of clients over the last year or two who have wanted to fund Roth IRAs for grandchildren and occasionally for a, for a, a college-aged child. And so I thought, well, you know what, that, uh, this isn't something you read much about. And I thought, well, that might be a, a pretty good topic for a conversation. So, you know, when you're, in your, when you're 16 or 20 or even 24, smaller amounts of money that you earn, they kind of seem like huge amounts because you haven't really earned a bunch of money before. And retirement is such a long way away that putting away money for your retirement when you're 16 or 20 or 24 just seems so far out of mind. But it doesn't have to be out of mind if you're the parent or the grandparent. And so that's really what we're talking about here is, might you have a young person in your life who could really benefit from a, an amount of money being given that's relatively small for you, but it's big for them and it's early in their life to take a, advantage of the miracle of compound interest. So that's where we're going today. I love that. Yeah. And, and about establishing the habit early on for somebody. You know, I was the beneficiary of uh, not, not an actual beneficiary in the financial <laughs> term, but uh, the beneficiary of a grandmother who did this for them, uh, David, when I graduated from high school. Oh, my wow. my gift, my high school graduation gift, my grandmother was a Roth IRA. She'd open one up so in my cool. name and put a little bit of funding in there to get it started. Very cool. Yeah. And I started adding to it. Um, I had been working in high school, but then as I started getting into jobs uh, that summer and then in, into college, I started contributing to it that from the very beginning. So it, it helped create that habit of saving, even if it wasn't uh, you know a big portion of my paycheck. Um, it's a habit that's carried on to today. So pretty that cool. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So what, what, what qualifications do you need, though? to open up a Roth IRA? Because I, I don't know if I would have been able to open up one on my own when I first started working in high school or not. I don't know what the rules are about that. Yeah. So the only rule is that you have to have earned income. So, oh, you know, if you okay. wait tables or you are a lifeguard or it doesn't really matter how much, how little you make, it certainly matters how much you make because the maximum you can contribute is 6,500 bucks 
uh, in 2023 if you're under 50 years old. So you just have to have taxable income and you could put 100% of your taxable income. Let's say you made $6,490 waiting tables in your summer job, which would be a pretty good summer job, but you could put the entire amount into your Roth or better yet, you spend the $6,490 on yourself and your grandparent puts in $6,490 into your Roth. Pretty easy to understand. A um, couple of couple of different options there. So I could have definitely started back in the high school days. So I thought I was overachieving, but sounds like I, <laughs> I still missed out on a few years of being able to save into that Roth. That's okay. I'm sure there are some, some parents <laughs> who own businesses that have hired their high school age kids to do something around the warehouse or the office, yeah. paid them a salary, and then dumped it into a 401k or a, in this case, a Roth. Pretty sharp strategy for somebody, that's for sure. All right. So I know, of course, our listeners are pretty well versed in the benefits of a Roth IRA. You could probably throw a dart at any of our episodes and that <laughs> mentality will be talked about in that episode. Um, but let's just because we're doing one dedicated to Roth IRAs today. Why don't you remind us of like just why? Why should we pay so much attention to this? It's super important if you believe that, you're, that tax rates are going up in the future. And with the size of our national debt, I'm convinced that tax rates are going up in the future. So the, the biggest benefits of a Roth are these. The money that you put in grows tax-free for decades until you take it out. And when you take it out, those withdrawals are tax-free as well. And maybe the one of the bigger points for anybody who is now taking required minimum distributions, whether they like it or not, whether they need, they need the money or not, with a Roth IRA, you never have to, you're never required to take that money out. So you, you can take it out. Uh, and, and we're going to go over some rules here in just a minute as to when you can take it out penalty free and tax free. Because there are occasions under 59 and a half where you, you do pay some tax on it. But um, if you wait till 59 and a half, uh, you have, you're not required to take money out and what you take out is tax free. Yeah. So many, so many positives to this. So, um, we could certainly do an entire podcast on those benefits, but a good little quick list to remind us all, you know what? I, I don't know where, because the entire episode's about Roth IRAs. I don't know where the best place to trigger our <laughs> Roth IRA sounder is David. I usually try to slide it in when appropriate, but let's just do it for the heck of it here. Halfway through the episode. Yeah, let's go. R O T H Roth Roth Roth. This felt like a good time to do it. Oh, that was refreshing. Halfway through, wasn't it? All right, so we're talking about young people in particular in the Roth IRA conversation. What if that young person can't wait until fifty nine and a half to take? that first withdrawal. I know I was tempted at times in my early working years to go and dip into that Roth IRA a little bit. What kind of penalties and taxes and things like that are we facing? Yeah, so so the examples from my office are teenagers and early 20-somethings. And 59 and a half is a long way away. And you never know what, what curveballs life are gonna, is going to throw you. So one of the main rules is you can always take out the contributions. The, the principal amount, the money that was actually contributed, you can always take that out tax-free and penalty-free. Even the week after it was put in, you could take it out. So that's rule number one. You're never taxed and there's no penalty on taking out the money that was contributed. But the earnings on that money are sometimes subject to tax or penalty or both. So what I want to do is walk through just three quickie little examples here of, well, when is a time when it's neither? When is a time when it's tax but no penalty? And when is a time when you just get whacked for all the penalties and taxes you can stand? So again, these are all under 59 and a half. I guess the, the other rule that you would want to know right off the top is if you're over 59 and a half, but the Roth has not been around for five years, then you would be subject to tax on the earnings. So that's a that was I'm sure covered in five previous podcasts, but I wanted to lead off with that. So all of these examples, these next three examples are people that are under 59 and a half. So if you're under 59 and a half and you've had it open for at least five years, and that's five years from the date of the first contribution, not five years from the date of each 
contribution. So you opened it, your, your grandparent opened it for you at uh, 16. And by the time you're 21, well, it's been open five years. So um, it, you can take the money out without any tax and no penalty only under two circumstances. The first one is not one you want to have happen, and that's if you're permanently and totally disabled. At that point, the IRS says, wow, you're in a tough spot. You can take that money out. We don't care how old you are, as long as it's been open five years. The second one is, again, if you're under 59 and a half and it's been open for five years or more, you can take up to $10,000 out as a first time home buyer. So in those two circumstances, you don't pay any tax and you don't pay any 10% penalty on the earnings. And just to reiterate again, you never pay tax on the amount of the contribution. So that's example number one. Number two would be, if you're under 59 and a half, is there a situation where you wouldn't pay a penalty, but you would be responsible for the taxes on the growth, on the earnings? And there are, there's actually seven different uh, circumstances, exceptions that the IRS has laid out. Congress has laid out, the IRS just implements them. So you can, you, you would not have a penalty, but you would pay tax on income if you took the money, if you took the earnings out to pay for qualified educational expenses. And while I don't have that definition in front of me, that's usually books, tuition, room and board at a, at a, at an instant, you know, at a university or a college or a boarding school. If you're withdrawing $5,000 of those earnings in the year after the birth or adoption of your child, um, you can take, let's say you have a, a bad medical year and your unreimbursed medical expenses are larger than 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. This is a little wonky, but it's a time okay. when you wouldn't have to pay the, the penalty. You just have to pay the taxes. So if you got a really bad health year, there's a rule, 72T is a, is a kind of a wonky rule in, in this retirement area, but it's if you take distributions that are substantially equal over a long period of time, and that would be a situation where you wouldn't pay the penalty. You're 25, you take the distributions out over, a, in this case, <laughs> till you're 59 and a half, but you wouldn't pay the penalty, but you would be subject to the taxes. If uh, the IRS levies you a bill that you can't pay other than, ta than taking the money out of your Roth, well, you wouldn't have to pay the penalty, but you would pay the taxes. And then the last one is, it's the exact same as the two situations where you didn't have to pay taxes or penalties. But in this case, you didn't have the Roth open five years, so you don't pay the penalty, but you do pay the tax. If you take out 10 grand as a first time home buyer, or if you're permanently and totally disabled. So there are situations, seven of them, where you wouldn't have to pay the penalty, the 10% penalty, but you would have to pay the tax. So for example, let's say that your grandparents put in 20 grand over, let's say they put in five grand a year for four years. And over that time, market was, I, I, this is a round number, it's, it's not probably not, not very realistic, but let's say the earnings were 20 grand. So you got a $40,000 uh, Roth and uh, you want to take the money out for one of those for a first time home buy or a, um, maybe you, you had one of the, an IRS levy for some reason, you didn't pay your taxes. In that case, you, the first 20,000, which were contributions, those are taxed at zero. The 20,000 of growth would you would pay, in, in this case, let's say you're in the 12% tax bracket. You'd pay 12% on the 20,000 of growth, which is 2,400 bucks. So in, let's say you decided to liquidate that $40,000 Roth, you'd pay 2,400 bucks in taxes. So it's not like it's a big, there's no big detriment to opening up the Roth for your kid or grandkid thinking, well, they might need to liquidate it early. Not a big deal. They pay taxes at whatever their tax bracket is at that point. And frankly, if they're needing to reduce, if they're needing to liquidate the Roth, they're probably in a pretty low tax bracket because something has happened. So it's uh, the, in that case, the tax and the lack of penalty, I can't see it as a, as a detriment to doing this strategy for your young person. And then number three, really number three isn't all that bad. Let's just say that they get to be 
25 or 28 years old and they uh, grandparents have been putting this five grand a year for the first four years of maybe college or something. It's again grown to 20 grand. They want to take the 40,000 out and buy a boat or, you know, do a wise thing and pay off their credit card debt. <laughs> I was going to say that didn't sound like it was a <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> or, buy, or buy a car or whatever they want to take it out. But it doesn't meet one of those seven exceptions. Well, in that case, they take the 20 grand of contributions out, zero penalty, zero tax. They take the 20,000 of growth out, but they have to pay taxes on it. They're in the 12% bracket, so 2,400 bucks, and they have to pay a 10% penalty on the growth. So that's another two grand, 10% on the $20,000. So that's a total of $4,400 of taxes and penalties on a $40,000 account. Even in that case, and, and when the grandparents put it in, they were probably hoping that this money would grow until age 60 or 65. And this grandkid would have a big, fat Roth account set up for their retirement by the time their retirement age. But, you know, life threw them a curveball. They needed to reduce it. Even that $4,400 of tax on a $40,000 account, that, in my view, is not a good reason to not do this strategy to help your kid or your grandkid out. Lots of unique and cool ways that you can use this Roth IRA for yourself or a loved one, as you've laid out for us a couple of different ways in today's episode. Now, I know a lot of that focus was on kind of teenager and, uh, and, and you know, maybe early 20s. What about any Roth opportunities out there to help kids or grandkids if they're beyond that age, but still what we would consider in that uh, young for a Roth IRA category that we've been focusing on in today's episode? So 20s, 30s, 40s, can you still get help from those outside sources? Yeah, you can. And I only have a couple of clients that, that utilize this. I think because as awesome as Roth IRAs are, I think they're a second thought for a lot of people. And But if you can help your, your kid or your grandkid continually build a tax-free pot of money for themselves, that's an awesome gift that you can make. So here's how that might work. You can contribute. It doesn't matter how old the person is, as long as they have earned income, as we said at the top of the show. And you can contribute to that person's Roth on their behalf. The money doesn't have to go to them. You can write the check directly to the you know, Fidelity or Schwab or your advisors, whatever, however that money gets through your advisor shop. The only exception is if they make too much money. So there's a Roth phase out. And this is for a, a working grandchild or child who has a 401k at work. Even if they're saving for their own retirement, you can still do their Roth, except if they make too much money. And what is that too much money? Well, there's a Roth phase out. It's very, very narrow, so I'm just going to mention the lower bound of it. But if, if married filing joint, if their household has modified adjusted gross income, you can just think of that as AGI, adjusted gross income, of $218,000 or less, then you can make a Roth contribution of $6,500 for them if they're under 50 and $7,500 for them if they're over 50. And there's no restriction against that. There's no penalties for doing that. And it's an awesome gift. Let's say that they're single. Well, the amount is, is significantly lower, but they're, if their adju modified adjusted gross income is under 138000 as a single person, then you can make that same $6,500 Roth contribution for them. Or if they're over 50 years old, 7500 bucks. Most listeners would know that those contribution limits are indexed to inflation loosely. And so they go up each year. This year, it happens to be 6500 bucks and 7500 bucks. So it doesn't have to be a, a high school kid with earnings or a college kid with earnings or a young adult with earnings. 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Anytime you can, my, my view of this as a, <laughs> as a financial professional and as a taxpayer is that anytime you can get money out of the taxable bucket or the tax deferred bucket, your 401k your, or your IRA, and into the tax free bucket, you're Roth, then you should take that opportunity. And if you have somebody in your life who maybe isn't saving as much as they'd like to or need to, you can be a big help to them and their financial future. If you pay just a little bit of attention to how you might be able to make a Roth contribution on their behalf. 
great points across the board on today's episode. There you have it. Too young for a Roth IRA? Definitely not. Never too early to start. Lots of unique ways that you can leverage and utilize that Roth IRA for yourself if you're uh, young and listening to today's episode or looking to help that younger generation out, whether it be your kids or your grandkids. Lots of neat ways to leverage this really cool financial tool. And you said, David, it often takes the back seat to others out there, but it really does need to get more and more prominence, I think, in most people's financial lives. So always happy when you highlight it on our program here for people to learn a little bit more about. Uh, if you've got questions for David, want to talk a little bit more if a Roth IRA is right for you or how you can leverage it in some of these unique ways that he's talked about on the episode today, very easy to get in touch. You can pick up the phone and give him a call at 913 913- 317-1414. Again, 913-317-1414. Or go to CoverYourAssetsKC.com. CoverYourAssetsKC.com. That contact info is in the description of today's show. David, thanks for all the help, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, congratulations to daughter number two. Hope it's a <laughs> wonderful weekend for you and your family, and uh, we'll look forward to maybe a fun report of how the wedding went and all that good stuff uh, maybe on our next episode. Well, I will look forward to giving that report, Walter. You have a great... I think you're taking a little vacation next week, I understand. We've got a little summer beach week coming up. So, yeah, it's a a bit of an odd one. We're doing like a Wednesday to Wednesday beach trip as we bridge two different family beach trips and participate in each one. So... (laughs) <laughs> the best kind good. of beach trip is when when you can stay at other people's places and do a little couple of days at one and a couple of days at the other. So that'll be our strategy. Don't forget your sunscreen. We've got plenty of it ready to go. I've 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 already gotten some decent sun out in that Colorado sun. We were doing Habitat <laughs> for Humanity this past weekend, and I got the job of building trenches, David. Oh my gosh! For seven straight hours, we were digging in ninety eight degree heat, but at least the humidity was low. But I've got plenty of sun, so yes, sunscreen will be. At- <laughs> A, a very important level in life over the next week. So. All right. Well, you have a great time, too, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good. That's David Dickens. I'm Walter Storhall. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time on Cover Your Assets, KC. Advisory services offered through Creative One Wealth, LLC, an investment advisor. KC Financial Advisors and Creative One Wealth, LLC, are not affiliated. We are an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. The information and opinions contained in this program have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. They are given for informational purposes only and are not a solicitation to buy or sell any of the products mentioned. The information is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. This material has been provided by a licensed insurance professional for informational and educational purposes only and is not endorsed or affiliated with the Social Security Administration or any government agency. It is not intended to provide and should not be relied upon for accounting, legal, tax, or investment advice.